Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Saturday of the fourth week of Advent. And today is also Christmas Eve. So here's what I've decided to do with our our Scripture readings is that uh, for today, I'm going to uh, read uh, the Scripture for the Mass at night on Christmas Eve. And then tomorrow on Christmas Day, I'll read the uh, Mass at dawn. And what this will do is it will take us through the entire Nativity passage of uh, Luke's Gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For today in the city of David a Savior has been born for you, who is the Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes, and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever I read this beautiful gospel passage, one that uh, I don't know about you, but it, it goes back uh, decades upon decades where, uh, as a family, we already always read the, uh, the nativity uh, from Luke's gospel. So this is, this is a common occurrence and one that I, I still love to revisit. These words are, are so beautiful and so uh, fill the heart with hope uh, that the Savior has come into the world. And Whenever I read this particular passage, there's a phrase, and I used it before uh, in uh, in some of my reflections, and that is the word, the fullness of time, a a word in the Greek kairos instead of chronos, which means chronological time, but kairos means the fullness of time. When you read the very beginning of this passage, you see how the fullness of time, all of the events are in place for the coming of the Messiah. The Blessed Mother has been prepared both through her immaculate conception and through the Annunciation when the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and the gift of life began in her womb miraculously. And then here, as we look at the fullness of times, we see that there is an historic Uh, juncture of time. Uh, Caesar Augustus uh, is emperor, uh, and he declares the whole world to be enrolled. Quirinius was the governor of Syria. This gives us a timeline of where in human history this takes place. And also, uh, this takes Mary and Joseph, the holy family, and places them in the prophetic city where the Messiah was to arrive, come from. He was supposed to come from Bethlehem. That was prophesied in the Old Testament in Micah. So here, 
Joseph, who was in Nazareth, and he was beginning to set up his shop and uh, care for his family, all of a sudden, Caesar Augustus makes this decision that he is going to uh, have the whole world uh, enrolled. And that means they're just going to update all their tax rolls. So Joseph goes down to Bethlehem, bringing Mary, who was very pregnant at the time. That must have been a very, very painful journey for her since she was so far along in her pregnancy. And they end up, of course, going to um, Bethlehem. <clears throat> and uh, there uh, she gave birth to the child. Uh, of course, as we know, uh, she laid him in a manger, which is a trough in a stable, uh, because there was no room. Uh, one of the things that I love, uh, last year I saw, uh, there's this uh, uh, movie, it's, actually it's a series called The Chosen. I don't know how many of you have seen it, but they did a beautiful depiction of the nativity. And one of the things they showed is that Mary and Joseph didn't uh, travel to a quiet city. There were people teeming everywhere because of the enrollment. They were, they were coming from all over in order to be in the city where they were uh, to be enrolled. And so uh, uh, Bethlehem was teeming with people. They were just pressed in on all sides by people everywhere. So again, finding a place at the end, it wasn't just a quiet knock. It was in all these teeming hordes of people all trying to find, find a place to stay. But obviously, uh, she found a place there in that stable, and uh, she laid him in a manger uh, because there was no room. So here we are. We have the fullness of times in that Mary was uh, uh, pregnant in the right town where the Messiah was to be born just due to the actions of the emperor of Rome. How amazing is that? All things God has in his control. So she gives birth to her child. You can just imagine what may have been going through uh, Mary and Joseph's mind. Okay, we're away from our home. We really don't know anybody other than relatives that may be here. But how are we going to even begin to communicate who it is that was born. They knew that Jesus was the Messiah, but how would the word get out? <clears throat> Little did they know that nearby, there in the fields, there were shepherds, and they had their flocks out at night. And to those shepherds, the angel of the Lord appears. And he begins to reveal to them this wondrous occasion. So the angel appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. Can you imagine? It's at night, it's dark, and all of a sudden, a heavenly being appears, and all of this light comes around, and they had to be fearful. And the angel, of course, said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy and begins to declare to them what has taken place. Isn't it wonderful to know that when Jesus was born in this humble way, in a, sta in a stable, in a, lying in a manger, that God would take care of the birth announcements, that he would declare to these shepherds through an angel something that the whole world needed to know. And so we have this, this beautiful, beautiful image of the shepherds receiving this glory, this message. And all of a sudden, not just one angel was there, but a multitude of heavenly hosts. I don't, you just don't know how many. Singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. There's a song that was written by uh, a, a singer named John Fisher many years ago that I just love. It's called Angel Song. And 
I don't know if I can get the words out exactly the way they were supposed to be, but I just love the sentiment and I love the context because he said, um, in the town of Bethlehem, a little baby child was born. Not too many people noticed. Uh, just some shepherds in a farm. Plus a few hundred thousand angels declaring glory to God. Isn't that amazing that not too many people noticed on earth. He wasn't born in the heart of Jerusalem. He wasn't born in a palace. He wasn't born at the temple. He was born in a stable in Bethlehem. And there, God declared the glory. Hundreds of thousands of angels praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to, the, uh, to those on whom his favor rests. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, tomorrow on Christmas Day, we're going to continue our story as we continue the, the uh, nativity story from Luke's Gospel. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.